Hey there! With everything that is going on right now in the world, things are going crazy, but I am not letting that slow me down in the making of my videos, or, or at least I try. So today, I would like to propose you another remaking of the DC Electronic Load with a totally new design that uses the equivalent of a current generator to provide a stable DC load to the equipment under testing. Thanks to the stability of this new version, I was able to push the power dissipation up to about 50 watts, a nice improvement from the previous version. But before getting into the heart of this video, please click on the subscribe button and the following bell icon so we'll be automatically informed of the new videos. And now, without any further ado, let's get into the details. The heart of this new device is the op-amp LM741, which controls the current pulled by the MOSFET P60. Since the LM741 needs a dual power supply in order to work with a needed range of output voltages, I used two 9V batteries to power the whole circuit. A double-pole single-throw switch disconnects the power when the device is not in use. The voltage divider made of a resistor R1 and R4, along with a multi-turn potentiometer RB2, provides the reference voltage for the positive input of the op-amp. The power supply of the op-amp is filtered with capacitors C1 and C2, which along with the capacitor C3 connected between pins 6 and 2 of the op-amp helps preventing auto-oscillations of the device. The negative output of the op-amp is connected to one end of the resistor R3, which has the other end connected to ground. Since R3 is a 1 ohm resistor, the voltage at pin 2 of the op-amp is numerically equal to the amount of current flowing through R3, which is the current drained by the load. Because of the properties of op-amps, the LM741 will make this voltage equal to the one present on pin 3, so basically it will output a voltage on pin 6 that is just about right to make the MOSFET conduct the desired amount of current. If because of heat the MOSFET should change the amount of current flowing in the device, the value of the voltage on resistor R3 will change accordingly, and therefore the op-amp will adjust its output voltage to bring the MOSFET in the original work zone. So, as you can see, this is exactly the same principle used to make a constant current generator, and basically this is exactly that. But the power supply, rather than coming from the inside of the device, comes from the DC generator under test. It's like some sort of a reversed current generator. The two diodes D1 and D2 are there to make sure that the voltage on the gate of the MOSFET never becomes more positive of the drain, or more negative than the source. Resistor R2 is used along with C3 to prevent auto-oscillations, which we already mentioned before. And lastly, the volt ammeter is powered by the battery BT1 when the switch is closed. It measures the voltage between the external black and red connectors, the plus and minus, and also the current that flows through the device. For that, the ammeter section is connected in series between the internal ground of the device and the black external connector. Although I originally thought to use a PCB for this circuit, I just ended up putting all the small components on a little perf board. But let's start from the beginning. So I started with the assembly of the back panel, where the heatsink is mounted. The MOSFET sits directly on the heatsink, like in the previous version of this device. This time, however, I used some screw terminal blocks to connect together the high current components, the MOSFET, the 1 ohm resistor, and the fuse. I also attached the diodes directly on these connectors, so they are close to the MOSFET leads. Notice the power resistor sitting on the top of the heatsink used for the MOSFET. Before assembling the final circuit, I ran some tests building the rest of the circuit on a breadboard, and once I was satisfied with the results, I started making the final circuit on the perf board. I also put some screw terminal blocks on the perf board to facilitate the connections with the components that could not be assembled on the board itself. And here is the finished product. As you can see, I used the same case from the previous version. Externally, it looks all the same, besides the big resistor on top of the heat sink. And here is the front panel, to which I added some new labels. You may have noticed the max 15V limitation, that is due to the safe operating areas of the MOSFET. In fact, I follow the suggestion of the MOSFET specifications. When used with DC constant current, the voltage between drain and source should never exceed 20V. After some experiments, I found that the safest maximum voltage value to avoid burning the MOSFET with this particular circuit is 16V, so I imposed a limit of 15V to stay on the safe side. 
Note that with this particular kind of circuit, it is not the current that could burn the MOSFET, since it is well cooled. Instead, it is the voltage which could suddenly break the gate insulation inside the MOSFET, causing it to become a crude conductor. The final testing was very simple. I connected the DC electronic load to a DC power supply set initially to 16 volts. Then, I powered up the device making sure that the potentiometer was all the way to the left. And then I started increasing the current by acting on the potentiometer. Once I was satisfied that the electronic load could handle a high current for a long time, I started playing with the voltage, reducing it to make sure that the current would not change. And, as you can see, it worked as expected. This concludes today's video. I think I will keep this DC electronic load for a while without making any further changes to it. I actually have another idea for yet another solution, this one involving the use of an Arduino to control the current in order to safeguard the MOSFET in case the external voltage is increased too much or the power dissipation exceeds the recommended values. And then I have another intermediate solution that uses a negative feedback toward the reference voltage of the positive pin of the op amp, so that to shut down the whole device in case the input voltage exceeds 15 volts. But this is for another time and certainly not in the near future, as I believe this version 4 of the electronic load will satisfy my needs for quite some time. Thank you for watching this video and please give it a thumb up, which will help improving its visibility so others can enjoy it too. Once again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so you can be automatically notified of new videos. Also, a small monetary contribution will also help in making more and better videos for your enjoyment, of course. Details are in the description below. See you on the next video and, as usual, happy experiments!